Hi, it's Jonathan, and these are tips for working better online during this uh, time of crisis that we're in. Today is Thursday, January 26, 2020. So I'm Jonathan, and I help people work better together online with more freedom and accountability. Today's quote. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit in. This is a Greek proverb, and I think it applies to organizations um, and how we treat them as well. So what is enlightened dissent? This is the idea that uh, we want to make it safe to share dissenting viewpoints at work. Um, and when you do so, do so consciously. Uh, I've, I've seen this in healthy organizations, and I think that in unhealthy organizations, it's probably a dangerous thing to do. So uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. If you've heard the term enlightened self-interest, this is the idea of when you do something in the world uh, for somebody else, you're ultimately doing it for yourself too. And so as with this, so in enlightened, uh, enlightened descent, when you're offering a contrary viewpoint, it's actually for the other person's benefit and for your own benefit, because when the organization gets better, you get better. So what are some reasons that you might do this? Or what are some reasons that, that this might come up? Um, you might offer uh, offer dissent because you, you you see risk. You see there's something risky, and you can offer someone something that will help them mitigate that risk. So like, oh, if you do that, have you considered that this thing will happen? Or I think it's a bad idea because this possible outcome. Um, it can also save time and money and energy when all the information that we have available is harnessed and everyone shares the different possibilities. Um, there might be a, a much faster way to do something. Uh, and then also, you can also use it to solve more than one issue at a time. So, you know, hey, if you, if you tweak that just a little bit, um, we could actually get this done at the same time. Or like, my thing would go a lot better if we did it that way. Um, could we try that? So these are a few reasons that you might want to offer enlightened dissent. So a few things to remember. It's just an opinion. Um, it's not personal. So this is not about a person or uh, someone's decision and decision making. And it also requires a safe environment. There's the concept of psychological safety, which uh, was determined to be the number one trait of high-functioning teams, according to a project Google did called uh, Project Aristotle. You can look that up. And psychological safety is just the ability to show and employ yourself without fear of negative consequences. I really don't like the term psychological safety because I think it takes us away from the idea of just safety. Like, is it safe? So uh, instead of using this that sort of abstraction of psychological safety, just think, you know, do I feel safe? Um, and safety can take, take, take many forms, you know, social, financial. Um, but that's a, that's a prerequisite of having an environment where you can do this freely and openly. So how do you dissent effectively? Uh, the first thing to do is to own your experience. Um, this is a whole other topic, but just to go really quickly, start with I words, talk about yourself. So I'm noticing this. I'm noticing that if we did this differently, that we'd have this different outcome. Or I wonder if we did this differently, if this other outcome would occur. Or it seems to me that if we do it that way, then this thing will happen. Um, so start with an I word, and we can get into the details of why that is, but I think for today we'll just skip it in the interest of time. Then at the end, you want to ask a question, and I'll tell you what that question is and how to ask it. And you want to ask it to a specific person. So you don't just drop your statement on the table and then wait in silence. You want to prompt someone to take a next step. So here's a powerful question to ask. Would it make sense to you to X, Y, Z, do the thing? Uh, this is different than does that make sense to you? When you say, would it make sense to you, it causes a couple different things to happen. A person internalizes what you're saying and takes it on as their own. And it also creates clarity uh, in terms of, um, creates clarity and ownership. Would, would it make sense to you, specific person, to do this thing? If they say yes, then you can assume that they're, they're going to do it, or you can discuss it more. Um, what we want to avoid here is using the word we. We is a terrible... A terrible worker, terrible decision maker. Um, we is we can't do anything. Like groups can't make decisions, and that's a really fundamental uh, flaw in a lot of people's thinking. Particularly, you'll hear leaders say, "Oh, we want to do it this way, or we value this, or 
you know, I think we should do X, Y, Z. We who be specific, get clarity and then get ownership. So how do you get started with this? Um, you can model that it's safe to dissent. And one way to do this is start with small stakes, um, offer it in a situation that really doesn't matter, something trivial, and use these lightweight, low risk situations, low stakes situations to try new organizational methods that you can then employ once you're used to them and others are used to them in, uh, in higher risk situations. Um, you can also share this video with your team. Having common language is a really important thing for any group. Um, so when everyone's watched it or when everyone knows about a concept or has read an article, you can point to that article and refer to it like, oh, you're talking about this concept or, oh, you're doing that behavior. Having an objective description that's, that's languaged, that's written down, uh, is a very powerful way to help groups get together. I've even seen people who, one of my old colleagues, she would look up words she would hear a word and she was like, um, well, the definition of that word is this. Is that what you mean? And then we all had a common definition for it. It could be very powerful. Um, and then also you can bring up, um, don't bring the concept up in a retro, but, um, and if you're, if, you're, if you're not doing retrospectives, which is an agile methodology, maybe you're doing a weekly reflection meeting um, or you have some way of reflecting on work that's been done and thinking about ways to do it better. And I'm not saying bring up the concept in a meeting. I think we should try enlightened dissent. Instead, think about an instance recently of something that happened. And you might say something like, yeah, last week when we were deciding that thing about the report format, um, I had some ideas, but I, I didn't want to slow us down. Right? I didn't want to um, disrupt the group, you know, so I didn't offer it. But I think it really might have been useful. And so next time, maybe I'll speak up more when I have an opinion. All you're doing is you're owning your experience and you're making a potential for, you're priming people for uh, a different behavior from you in the future so you can make it safer to, to say different things. And that's it. Um, please get in touch with me. Uh, you can reach me up by chat. Just go to teal.dog slash chat and the box will pop up. You can also schedule a meeting, teal.dog slash meet to schedule a meeting. My email is j at teal.dog and I love hearing from people. If you like this video, please, Hit that like button, uh, subscribe, keeps me going. Um, and I really appreciate you watching. It's my wish that you're happy and well and effective on your self-management journey. And I'll talk to you soon.